Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. On this most important day in our nation's history, Inauguration Day, Cavalcade of America presents a special broadcast entitled Bless This House. Our star, McDonald Carey. <laughs> Stars out. 
The storm will try your strength, John, I said. But it will clear the air. After the storm, there'll be brighter stars ahead. I was right, John, then. And now that storm of revolution has tossed us up here at last to this strange, cold house. And there are new storms ahead. There are always storms. Always. But they pass. They do pass. Look, John. Hmm? Look through the window. What do you see? I see the night. Look again, John. It's a clear night. A clear night of stars. After the New England Adamses, Mr. Jefferson, a widower, came to the house from Monticello, where he would have preferred to stay. His hostess, when he needed one, which was seldom with this Spartan Democrat, was Dolly Madison, wife of his closest friend. State occasions were few, but when they did occur, we are told the wines were magnificent. And on one notable occasion, the ingenious Mr. Jefferson outdid himself by inventing something very like baked Alaska. James Madison followed Thomas Jefferson into the house. Jefferson's friend, almost a son or a brother. And the glamorous Dolly came into her own. You should spell her name, by the way, as she did. D-O-L-L-E-Y. But with Jimmy and his lovely bride, there came to the house in June of 1812. The British troopers and Marines came under Cockburn and Roth, up from the river, closer and closer to the house, and to the president's wife. I am Dolly Madison, and I want to send the people who that I cut the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution into my bodice and ran from the burning house. And it is not true that I hacked the Stuart portrait of George Washington from his frame and carried it off with the British at my heels. But most of all, it is not true that Jenny, my husband, was a coward and left me alone when the British came. He was with the troops at Bladensburg where he should have been. I went to him when I could. And on the way, I looked back at Washington through the smoke and the lightning of the storm. And I saw the house, our house, our lovely house, burning, burning. Quite young as houses go, it burned. The interior, still unfinished, with a smoke blackened ruin, completely a ruin. But the free stone walls were left, and the house was rebuilt. Oh, yes, it was rebuilt. So the Virginian dynasty resumed, with James Monroe and Virginia Cortwright Monroe, who brought to the house their beautiful French furniture. Then, John Quincy Adams, the learned Yankee, who treated White House guests to dispositions on poetry, music, painting, sculpture, all the old books say, of rare excellence and untiring interest. But a new storm was brewing. A storm of votes this time. Votes and voters out of the West, newly conscious of political power. Under Andrew Jackson, the old house would dance to a brand new tune. After his inauguration, Old Hickory rode from the Capitol to the White House on horseback. And he was followed by a mob of his supporters, rough and ready men and women from beyond the mountains. At the doors of the house, guards and ushers were overwhelmed. And into the stately East Room, the mob pushed its way to the long tables where cakes and ice cream and punch were laid out. Disgusting, perfectly disgusting. Reminds one of the days of the French Revolution. Look at that woman. 
Yes, that's the reason. Why, she's actually wiping her hands on the window drape. A chair, I can't see. Oh, the chairs are much too small for these bears to sit on. Good heavens, they've broken that beautiful bed so far. Well, that's quieted things down a bit. My, my, this sort of thing would never do in Boston. Never do at all. I don't suppose it would, gentlemen. But I find it a rather pleasing spectacle. Oh, really? And who might you be, may I ask? My name is Andrew Jackson. The junior resident. Yes, I'm the one the fuss is for. But this is the people's house. Let them enjoy it. Inauguration Day broadcast starring McDonald Carey as our narrator. Martin Van Buren of New York, who bought a gold dinner service for the White House and lived to regret it, for he lost re-election because he was said to savor French sauces on golden spoons. There was much gaiety, much laughter down the years. And usually, there were children. Here in this house, young Tad and Willie Lincoln played with the two task boys from Cincinnati. And one day in 62... The four of them made a soldier doll out of rags and old clothes, and they called it Jack. Then they sentenced Jack, the soldier doll, to be shot at sunrise for sleeping on sentry duty. A gardener brought the news to the president's study. And back to the four very small boys came a message. The doll Jack is pardoned by order of the president, A. Lincoln. Eleanor Roosevelt has said that if the White House is haunted, it is haunted by the shade of Abraham Lincoln. But many lonely men have walked these halls, up and down, up and down trying to make the right decision. Very soon after the incident of the doll, young Willie Lincoln, he was 11, went riding on his pony in a chilly rain and in a matter of hours fell sick of a fever. There was a ball planned for the White House and Mrs. Lincoln couldn't bring herself to call it off. All night, while the Marine Corps band blared its music in the East Room, the parents took turns going up to see Willie. The boy lay ill for a few days, and the footsteps echoed outside his bedroom door. Mr. President? Yes, Mrs. Eckley. This little boy, sir. Out of 
the horrible burden a victory note on a telegraph dispatch form dated April 2nd, 1865, Mr. Lincoln's pen scrawls in haste and joy. Lieutenant General Grant at Appomattox, allow me to tender you and all with you the nation's grateful thanks. At your kind suggestion, I think I will visit you tomorrow. A. Lincoln. too in this house. Plenty of fun. It was the beautiful Mrs. Polk who put in gas lighting. But at the first state reception, the gas supply failed. All would have been lost had it not been for Sarah Polk's forethought. She had kept candles in the East Room's giant candelabra. No one was left completely in the dark, and a merry time was had by all. Mrs. Benjamin Harrison installed electric lights when she began her campaign to exterminate the notorious White House rats. The current, direct current, was installed by a young mechanic named Ike Hoover, who stayed on at the house for 42 years as chief usher. But it was Grover Cleveland who first brightened up the White House with... With a White House wedding. The ceremony took place in the Blue Room. And when the bride, Miss Frank Clara Folsom, arrived... My dears, I wish you could see her in the bridal gown. It's a heavy, oh, very heavy, ivory satin with a high, plain corsage, elbow sleeves, and a very long train. The bodice is bordered with a narrow band of orange flowers and leaves. And the train, it's at least four yards long, is rounded, ever so slightly rounded. She looks beautiful. Just the president wore the canonical evening suit of black. And it was this president, Grover Cleveland, who, in the depths of the panic of 1893, discovered that he was suffering from a cancer in the roof of his mouth. Rather than further disturb a country in the throes of depression, he put to sea with a team of surgeons and suffered half of his upper jaw to be removed in secrecy on shipboard. The secret was kept for 25 years. Yes, the White House is a place of terrible responsibility. And the sound of the White House is this sound. Great, peaceful people into war. 
but the right is more precious than peace. And we shall fight for the things we have always carried near us our hearts. To such a task we can dedicate our lives and our fortunes. Everything that we are and everything that we have, the pride of those who know that the day has come when America is privileged to spend her blood and her might for the principles that gave her birth and happiness and the peace which she has treasured. God helping her, she can do no other.
in the cavalcade trails for tonight's story.